recording. Perfect. All right, welcome everybody. My name is Tina Marie. This is my very first blab. Every month we'll be doing this on the third Saturday with a theme this year, or this year, this month is Credit Education Month and I have Miss Brittany Butler here who is a money stylist, Rod Griffin from Experian. So Brittany, go ahead and introduce yourself. Okay, um, my name is Brittany Butler, like she said, and I run a website called MissBFab.com. And on that website, I teach women to use money to brand their life's purpose. So I know that there's a lot of things that we want to do in our life, and sometimes money is a holdup. So I teach people how to manage their finances so they can build a business or travel or just retire and be able to live, um, you know, the same lifestyle that they were when they were working. So, yeah, and I'm excited to be here today. <laughs> and Rod, please go ahead and introduce yourself. Sure. I'm Rod Griffin. I'm director of public education for Experian. And so get to talk to people about who we are, what we do, uh, how to have great credit, personal credit and business credit. So a great job that I have. I think I have one of the best jobs in our company. Awesome. Awesome. I appreciate you for being here today. Uh, last minute changes. For those that have uh, known me already or those who just joined in that doesn't know me, my name is Tina Marie. I am the CEO and a small finance business coach. And I teach small business owners, startups, and freelancers how to manage their accounting and bookkeeping to leverage them for growth. I've seen too many small businesses close down because they're not managing their accounting and finances. So that's why I went to business. And every month I want to help introduce you to a new aspect to business that might help you for growth. This month is credit again. So Brittany, I want you to talk about a little bit about managing your personal finances and how you paid off 40 grand in debt. Okay, so um, the system, I feel like it's pretty easy. It's just about having some sort of a plan. So in May, 2014, me and my husband, we got really serious about paying off our debt. And before we started paying off our debt, we, um, had one income. We still have one income, but we were just coming up short at the end of the month. And I was like, you know what? This isn't going to work. We have to sit down and figure this out. So I started um, reading things and learning how to manage your finances. And really, honestly, what we do is we just budget. We set limits for everything. I did also start couponing. But from there, we just um, budgeted, in, budgeted in our debt as if it was a bill like anything else. So every month we put a large sum of our money um, towards our debt. And we just do that every month and make sure that um, we're just not out here spending and not managing our money. But that also doesn't mean that we don't ever have fun or we don't ever do anything. Cause I think sometimes people feel like when I say budget, it's some type of real restriction. No, it's just knowing what you can and can't afford. So um, November and December, we usually take off and we don't pay any debt so that we can travel and visit our family and also have a Christmas for our kids. So it's just about, about making better choices. So. I like how you talk about taking November and December off and you've already pre-planned not to spend extra money those months for those big purchases like traveling for family. Um, I know a lot of people who are paycheck to paycheck struggle with that. Rod, what do you see is the biggest issue for folks to save money and budgeting when they're yeah, living paycheck to paycheck? Difficult because saving seems so impossible. Um, you know, it's it, it becomes a... I'm getting feedback in a real weird day today. Um, you know, so it, especially when it comes to the holiday season, like we we're just talking about, you know, everybody wants to spend, everybody wants to buy nice things for their families and having the self-control and the planning to set aside when you're paycheck to paycheck is difficult. You know, that that's, it's the psychological aspect that you have to live within mm -hmm. your means, uh, even when those means are limited and getting over that edge is the really hard part. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm basically asking a lot of questions about personal finance and cleaning up your credit because for small businesses who are just starting up in the first year or two, it's hard to establish business credit. 
And oftentimes people are looking into your personal credit for your very first couple of years, especially when you have to personal guarantee. So that's why I want to get some tips for people to clean up their personal credit for any startups. Anyone is looking for loans or bills uh, or not bills, but to start up their business and establish business credit. What kind of tips do you offer? Rod? As a small business owner, I think the first thing you have to do is establish a business credit report. And, you know, as small business or micro business owners, you'll off and fund your personal business your, your business expenses with personal credit. And that's where people find themselves getting into trouble because when they run into personal financial issues, it affects the business. And if the business has trouble, it affects their personal credit. So it, it really uh, sort of a double whammy. Um, so you need to establish a business uh, file with the state become an LLC um, and at that point open independent individual business accounts as opposed to personal credit. And that will help begin to establish that business credit report, separate that personal credit from the business report so that if your business doesn't um, meet your expectations and isn't as successful as you hope, it won't affect your personal credit. So it won't drag both down Excellent. So that's a big recommendation about separating your personal and business expenses. This is advice I give to all my business owners. Even if you're a sole prop, uh, proprietor and don't have an LLC, you want to have a separate account for your business. But especially if you're an LLC or an S Corp or C Corp, you want to open a business account. And that will take into effect for any future business credit approvals for loans. They will look into your history and your banking history for the business. So do we have any questions from the audience? If you do, go ahead and do a forward slash Q before your question and post that. And we'll go ahead and answer that. I do have it on Twitter if we have any questions from there as well. But Brittany, I did want to ask you, after paying 40 grand, how did that feel? And how did you see your credit improve? And what opportunities were more open to you after well, that? Um, well, actually, we started May 2014, and we still have to pay off our mortgage. And we're now currently paying off our car. So when we hit um, two years, it'll actually be 90K that we've paid off. And um, my credit score has went up because it was... I guess it was at low and now it's kind of like at fair, but because I'm already in my house and I don't um, plan to get another house at this time, I'm not so much focused on my credit score, but I know that that's an area where people need to um, focus their attention if they do want to buy a house and they also want to start a business and want to get a loan. But at this point, it's just, I don't know, it just feels so much better to know what I can afford and what I can't afford and just not that weight and that stress that I had with money prior to now. Like I don't have that anymore and it's just a, a really great feeling. That's great, that's awesome. So have you started looking into financial planning after you finish paying off your debt? I know you'll still have yeah. your home. Yeah, that's, but that'll be the next step. step, yep. That'll definitely be the next step, yep. Well, I look forward to watching your blog posts on your growth yeah. with that. So we do have a question from Tila. All I have is a PayPal account for my biz. Should I open an actual bank account? Rod, do you um, want to answer yes. that? Yes. <laughs> the answer is yes. Uh, you need to have a bank account, a business bank account, as well as a uh, business credit account. So if you have a business line of credit or a business credit card, that's separate from your personal credit, it's going to be essential to establishing that business credit report. Uh, you know, until you have uh, credit accounts and bank accounts in the name of the business, you won't have a business credit report. So business credit reporting kind of acts the same way as personal report. You'll have a business credit score and you'll have a report that shows your accounts and how you manage them and how are you paying on time. So it shows all of that information, uh, just like a personal report. So you have to have the business account in order to have that business report. And I like to add, like my business account is with the local right. credit union in town. So a lot of those credit unions have business accounts where they don't have monthly fees. Tilo, so you should look into that. And another reason why you kind of want to establish a bank account with a local bank or even Chase or anything, 
you establish a history, consumer history with them. So they'll see your banking history immediately. You establish rapport with the bankers in, in the branch. And that might even improve your, your I don't want to say chances of getting approved because you've already established a history, a working history with them. So that might be a bonus as well, opening your business account. I think that's an important point too, is especially with small business or seasonal business, if you're working with a bank and there are banks that actually specialize in uh, seasonal work and seasonal businesses. So you know, if you can find one and local to you, having that relationship can be very helpful. Yeah. Excellent. You mentioned that there's business reports, just like there's business credit agencies. Can you list a few of them that where we can maybe establish mm -hmm. a relationship yeah, so with? Or Experian has an ex a business called Experian BIS Business Information Services. Uh, Dun and Brad Street is the very famous business credit reporting uh, organization. So, and there are a couple of others uh, and others, uh, smaller business reporting uh, organizations as well that compete. So you really don't so much have a direct relationship with us as the reporting business. It's with the bank, just like a consumer of uh, credit report. You bank with or have accounts with a, a lender and they report to us. And as a consumer, you can get your personal report, check what's in it. As a business owner, you can get your business credit report, see what's in it. If there's information that uh, needs to be corrected, you can dispute it, do exactly the same kinds of things. Okay. Excellent. So go ahead and do forward slash Q if you have any questions for our panel today. We're just talking a little bit about business uh, credit, how to establish it, opening a business bank account and personal finances. So Rod, what else can you tell us about business credit? When is the right time to actually, you know, yeah. apply for a loan? When do you really um, need to? You know, that's a, depends on the business and, and what you're trying to do, uh, you know, and, and the kinds of uh, resources or hardware or infrastructure you need. Um, but it's a good idea to open an account, I think, as soon as you can, even if it's a small one. Um, you know, I've known, uh, for example, um, hot dog vendors on the corner. They have their equipment. They'll get a small loan. Um, there's an organization, for example, called the Opportunity Fund. That is a nonprofit business lender that helps with lower interest kinds of small loans for business owners to get them started. And can be a great way to, to get your credit report established. They report their accounts to experience a business credit reporting system. And so you would establish that business credit report. Um, you know, as soon as you can, I always, it's a, it's a common practice, but a, it's a bit of a risk for small business and what we think of as micro business owners to use their own personal credit, their credit cards um, to secure debt. For their business and if you can establish your business register that business and then open the business account as opposed to your personal account it can help protect you as an individual so the sooner you can establish that business credit history the better Rob makes a very big point and keeping your personal business finances separate and establishing that business credit early it's important to separate that corporate veil, especially if you establish an LLC, an S Corp, C Corp. It'll protect you in the future from audits and, yeah. God forbid, <laughs> someone sues you. But it really protects your personal liability and keep your business separate from your business. So we have another question here from Tila: Is the initial business credit based on your personal credit? Uh, for me, uh, no, uh, it's not actually. You, you will your Personal credit is never mixed with your business credit. If you use personal credit to underwrite your business uh, operations, your business credit, up, um, what will happen is the business lender can look at your personal report as part of making that decision, but your personal report doesn't get blended with that business report. So as a, as a business owner or officer, uh, with legal responsibility, they may look at your credit report, your personal report, but 
it doesn't get merged in any way. Uh, if you have your business credit established, they may only look at your at your business report. Sorry, getting my personal business mixed up. But uh, the, the business credit report would be looked at, not your personal report. And so that's, a, that's why it's so important. Okay. Are there any other options to establish business credit besides uh, operating a business uh, loan or getting a bank account? Um, I, no, I think it's just like a personal business credit or personal credit. I have too many account credit reports mixed up in my brain today. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the so personal side um, it operates the same way. You don't have a personal report until you have personal credit. Business credit report, you don't have a business credit report until you have business credit or you're working with vendors, um, you know, or someone who's doing uh, business with you. Uh, and so you have accounts mm -hmm. and uh, payment terms and all those sorts of things that would be part of the report. So until you have that, there's no report, nothing to be reported. Okay. So for anyone who doesn't have a stellar personal credit history and can't get approved for a loan or even just a, a micro loan, are there secured loans just like for personal credit that they can get for their business? That I don't know. It, that one really gets more specific to the lender themselves and then how they would make those okay. decisions and what kinds of accounts they'd offer. Excellent. So what I was saying to the audience is, I know for anyone who's trying to improve their personal credit and can't get approved, let's say they just fought for bankruptcy that they can apply for a secured credit card. It's usually where you put a certain amount of money down and they'll put it into a savings account and the bank will open up a credit card and treat it like a credit card and report to all the credit agencies like as if it was an unsecured credit card. And the security is, let's say you put $500 down, they'll either give you 90% or 100% of that amount as your credit limit. And if you can't pay your bill, they have that security of that $500 you already gave towards paying off your card or your credit. So my question was, if there's any options for business businesses as secure loans. So that's something we might have to do research for. So we have another question. Brittany, how often did you review your debt plan after implementing it? Um, well, to answer, I guess it's two parts. Well, every a few days before every month, we always... Um, kind of decide what's going to happen in that month that's going to be different from the month before and how much we can actually put towards our debt. So, I mean, if we have to go to the dentist that month or anything, you know, those type of things will change how much we can pay towards our debt. And then if like with our food, um, we were, we set that for $500 every month and we saw that we weren't always um, staying within the $500. So we reevaluated that to say, well, maybe it should be $600. That seems a little bit more realistic. So we just based it on, um, I guess, the climate of what's going on. And but for the most part, um, we stick to the same little routine, the same plan. And that's why I always teach people to figure out what your schedule is, because that's going to dictate a lot of what you spend money on. If for the most part, each week is the same, then, you know, you know, for a week, it cost me $100 to live that type of thing. So um, hopefully that answers our question, but that's how we do it. Are there any apps or websites that you recommend helping people to manage their budget and keep an eye um, on it? I like Mint. Um, they have a website and they have an app where you can actually plug in your bank accounts and it'll track your spending. And then you can also go in there and plug in like your credit cards. So you can put in your mortgage, your car loans, everyone that you own. But we personally use um, Excel. And my husband is really big into technology. So he built out this whole Excel spreadsheet. So <laughs> we don't use the app as much, but that's what we use. So you can also do that too. I know if, even if you don't know how to make it very complicated, you can use Excel to kind of track your spending and then also build out your, your spending limits for everything. As an accountant, I love Excel. So I do everything Excel. I don't know. If there's any aspect of my life that I don't use Excel, but for those who don't want to spend all their time on Excel, Mint is a great, great app yeah. and it's free and you can track your net worth in there. Meaning what Brittany said, you can put in your loans, your credit cards, and it'll track your spending automatically from your bank accounts. And you can even set goals 
and mints. So if you want to save for, let's say, a house or you're looking to save three to six months of living expenses in your emergency fund, you can link them to a specific bank account and that'll help track mm -hmm. your progress. So it's a great tool for anyone who doesn't want to spend the time with Excel, who's not an Excel <laughs> like me. <laughs> Do you have any apps or any websites that you recommend as well? Mint was the one that came to mind right away. I think that's hugely popular. Uh, there are some other really good ones that are drawing a blank on this morning, but um, <laughs> you know, they're, that I've seen. So, oh, yeah, you can type it up in the chat. But, uh, you know, there's things you should do. I think Brittany made a really important point, and that is you have to be flexible. You know, I think people approach a budget and they put it in paper and they think that's fixed. And if they don't make that goal, they fail. And it's not true. You know, you have to look at where you are. You take a first shot at it. If you need to adjust, you adjust and, and you figure out how to make that work. So Brittany's point was it was and food is obviously near and dear to my heart, too. So <laughs> it's you have to adjust that budget up a little bit. Yeah. But, you don't need to adjust it down for me, but um, <laughs> along with the calories. So it's, uh, yeah, I think that was an excellent point. You know, you, you have to be flexible. You have to recognize reality. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's big for everyone. It's numbers aren't set in stone and you got to see the trends and make the adjustments where you need to make it. And that's all budgets are. They are not meant to be strict. And that's why I try to tell my business owners as well. They are a guideline and keeping your expenses down and really watching what you're spending and what you're bringing in as well. So that's what I try to tell my business owners. Watch your spending, cut where you need to. If you have to spend more in an area, that's OK. That's what's running your business. Just make sure you're actually bringing in you know, revenue income that's yeah. comparable to that so that's a great point don't beat yourself up that's then you'll definitely not right. keep track of your <laughs> your budget yeah. that's it do we have any more questions from the audience if you do again just put forward slash q in your question and we can prompt that up now i have a lot of freelancers and network marketers as clients so they don't necessarily need business loans but Sometimes it's what do you what are your thoughts on crowdfunding? It has nothing to really do with credit, but what's your thoughts on crowdfunding, Rod? I think it's a really new, interesting way to generate finances and funding for for programs. Um, it kind of gives you a sense too of who's interested and what the interest it is interest is in what you're working on. So it kind of gives not only funding but also a, a sense of what the market might be in some ways. So I think it's really an interesting kind of new development. I, I you know, don't have a good sense yet of um, what it will mean in terms of, say, reporting um, and that kind of thing from, from our business perspective. But I think it's a, a really unique and innovative way to, to resource, uh, you know, a business or a personal, a personal project. So I don't know if we have any more questions. Uh, Brittany, do you want to introduce what you do and any services you're providing and how they can connect with you? Well, I actually, for the month of April, I'm going to have a challenge going on. The challenge will be um, 21 days, and it's kind of like a financial rehab. So I will give you a task every day for 21 days, basically build a budget and, um, you know, little small things like setting limits. It's just the things that I was just talking about earlier and getting you to do them in a group format so you have some type of accountability. And then you understand, like you guys said, that you can be flexible with what's going on and how to work a budget seriously. So that will be $7. And if you guys are interested, in it, you can go to bit.ly forward slash payback challenge. Yeah. So that's what I have going on. So we'll also have a Facebook group. So I already have a few people in there. And yeah, so every day for a month, you'll get an email. And then also, too, I'll be doing a webinar um, midpoint for anyone who has questions and just needs to know, like, OK, I tried to build a budget and I'm not getting it. Um, so I need some help. So it should be really fun. It's my first time doing um, 
a challenge this intensive. I did one in January and that went over really well, but this one will be a lot more action and not just mindset like the first challenge. Excellent. So Rod, I know you guys are very active on Periscope at Experian underscore US. And Friday was a lot of fun. They did, what was it? Yeah. Name that tune. It was all these money dudes, which was a lot of fun. Ah. But one of the tunes, yeah, you yeah, should have been on there. It was a lot of fun. And you're on there every day. I try to try, it's the key word lately, to be on Tuesdays and Thursdays uh, on our Periscope at 1.30 Central, 2.30 Eastern. And when I'm on, it's just a wide open, ask anything kind of uh, 30 minutes about credit reports and credit scores. So if anybody wants to know about credit reporting or credit scoring, jump on Periscope with us uh, at on Tuesdays and Thursdays at 1.30 Central, 2.30 Eastern. We also have our credit chat, hashtag credit chat at Experian every Wednesday at two o'clock. Uh, Central, 3 Eastern, and we have a Twitter chat and a Blab that goes on at the same time with a lot of great partners and experts in personal finance and engage with lots of people about, with lots of really cool questions and, and tr just try to share information with each other. Excellent. I know one of your posts, I love that someone quoted, uh, credit should be used as a tool not to finance yeah. your life. <laughs> so what are some tips that you can tell us or teach us that credit is used as a tool versus paying for yeah, and our lifestyle? Credit cards in particular, people think of as, you know, credit's bad. Um, I often tell people when I grew up, the way I'd learned about credit from my parents was my dad thought credit was evil and my mom thought credit was a gift from God. And I found that <laughs> it's really somewhere in the middle. And if you use it well, it's a great financial tool. <laughs> Um, meaning if you have a credit card, you don't have to carry debt. Credit and debt are related, obviously, but they're not the same thing. So you can have a credit card, make a small purchase, pay it and turn around just the next day, pay it in full, pay it off. And you're, you're building that credit history and you're using that credit so that when you need future services, you'll be able to show that credit report and have great credit scores and get the credit you need. So if you're going to buy a house or a car or, you know, some other service you need setting up utilities, you get lower rates. Uh, so that's one way it will save you money. The other is having a credit card is necessary for a lot of things today. So if you're going to rent a car and I travel some for work. So if I rent a car, I have to have a credit card for them as security. Doesn't mean I have to pay for it with that credit card, but I can use the card to access services that I can then pay for in cash. Uh, and so I take advantage of that. You can use credit to get discounts at stores, particularly around the holidays. You know, you, you can apply for a card, get a 20% discount, turn around and pay it in full, not carry a balance. You don't have to carry balances. Um, you know, so credit becomes a tool. Debt is the financial problem. So using that credit to take advantage of, you know, incentive programs, airline miles, um, discounts where you shop a lot, um, you know, those sorts of things make credit a financial tool. Carrying debt mm -hmm. because you're using it to buy things you can't otherwise afford uh, or save for is what gets people into trouble. You know, I want the big screen TV, the Super Bowl's coming up. I want to apply for credit and have no plan for how you're going to repay that debt, when it will be repaid, and then understanding what you're going to have to give up. Because anytime you use credit to take and take on debt, you have to trade off something. You're going to have to delay a purchase or not buy something else until it's paid off. And that's uh, you know where people get tripped up. You make a very good point. I think a lot of people do get tripped up there they see the credit card as an extension and more money when it's really not they need to start viewing it as a trade off for something else, something that they can't pay for right now because you have to pay for this. Uh, it's a great point. And I think that's also a great point in establishing your business credit as well, maybe a small credit card. And if you are buying office supplies every month, just use your credit card for that and pay it off. And, it's, and then you're establishing your business credit as well. So it's a great way to use that. 
and a great way to think about it down the road if you want to expand, let's say, buy an office building or, well, you know. And as a business owner, credit even becomes a more powerful tool in some ways because when you can borrow, not so much today with the stock market like it is, I guess, but um, you can borrow often at, say, 3%. And invest your business funds at six or seven percent, and you're making money. So you use other people's money to help support your business uh, while you earn more. Uh, you know, so you, so it's you know, credit then becomes a financial tool that actually helps strengthen your business. I knew of a small trucking company that paid cash for all their equipment. And if they would have, and they're, they closed up because they lost, they, they cost too much. Um, but if in talking to the consultants who came in, if they would have used credit to buy their trailers and equipment and depreciate them off the books while they invested their cash reserves, they would have been able to, to stay open because they would have actually been ahead in using credit. Because the credit would have cost less than using the cash. Uh, you make a good point there. So that's something to chew on and think about. We have a few more people that just joined. So if you have a questions, just do forward slash Q in your question. We can answer that. We have Rod Griffin here from Experian and Miss Brittany Butler from Miss BFAB, personal finance coach and money stylist. So we have a question here from Tila again. How often could you check your business credit report yearly, just like personal? Yes. Yeah, I, I would say at least yearly. Um, just to make sure everything's updated. Business credit reports a little bit different in that you know, with your personal credit report, Experian will never call you or contact you directly. With our business credit reporting system, we might call to verify that you are the owner of the company, what the address is, some of that kind of identification. So be aware that if you get a call about your business from Experian, it might be a legitimate call. Uh, just to update our records, but it's good to check your own so that you can update it too. If anything's changed. Um, another thing about business credit reports that can be a powerful tool is that anyone can access them. So if you're a contractor and remodeling homes, your potential customers, individual cons consumers can get your business credit report and look at that. And they can see that you're financially sound, that there are no public record issues, you've not been bankrupt, um, you know, they'll be able to see that you are a sound, reliable business and someone they want to work with. So that business credit report becomes a marketing tool for your business. Wow, that's powerful news. I think a lot yeah. of us didn't know that. <laughs> so that's, that's something to keep in terms and keep in the back of your mind while you're establishing your business credit, that it can be a marketing tool and that customers and consumers can look you up. So, wow. <laughs> <laughs> I think you just made a lot of jaws yeah. drop yeah, right now. <laughs> and I was trying to pull up our website to make sure I gave you the right URL. But uh, let's see if I can pull it. We can use that too as consumers. Look up their credit. <laughs> I did know that other suppliers and vendors can look up your business credit to see whether they want to open and extend a credit, like for restaurants, uh, a lot of suppliers like food suppliers and liquor suppliers will look up your business credit history to see if they want to extend a credit to where they can just send you an invoice and you pay it back in 30 days. That's another way to establish business credit. I can't believe I forgot that. So if there's any suppliers or vendors in your industry that you can work with, I think Office Depot has one for small businesses that you could open up an account with them and you can order supplies and then they'll send you an invoice and you'll pay it. So that's a small way to establish your business credit. But now that we know that consumers, not just other suppliers and vendors can look up your business credit. So keep that in mind when you're managing your finances. Yeah, if, if you go to experian.com slash small business, you'll be able, it will say, would you like to request a credit report? You can search by company. Uh, and you can find out how to get that small business report. Type it in the chat box. Did I do it right? Experian.com forward slash business. 
forward slash small dash business. Small dash business. Navo TS, business credit is also used by the government to determine viability, sustainability, and business worthiness. Excellent quote. Thank you, Anavo. So do we have anything else do you want to talk about for personal finance and clean up your personal credit, Ms. Brittany? Um, well, not necessarily. I know you're taking notes right now. <laughs> <laughs> now those websites I'm all listening to. Um, well, no, just um, I think that people always say, like, where to start, where to, where to start, and it feels so overwhelming. But just sit down, do some math, look at your numbers. It doesn't have to be overwhelming, even if you start with just 100 extra dollars and pay towards some of your debt, um, you know, every month and climb from there. And once you start and you actually stay committed, even if it's a small amount, you'll see some changes, so. Yeah. Excellent, start small. I've heard of the snowball effect, so maybe just pick the smallest thing that you have to pay back and just, yeah, start, just there, start there. And you'll yeah. keep going. Mm -hmm. What about you, Rod? Do you have any tips um, or anything yeah, last minute? Um, you like to get your out? credit report. Yeah, that sounds like an obvious yeah. one. Uh, but I talk to people and they'll, their head goes down. <laughs> you know, I don't want to. I don't want to see it. But you need to get the report because you can't do anything about it until you have it. You know, you need to know what's there so you know what you need to work on. So get that report. It's free once every twelve months so at www.annualcreditreport.com. Big long string annualcreditreport.com, and you can get one from Experian and from our competitors, TransUnion and Equifax, and look at them, purchase a credit score, you know, get a score uh, and, and get a sense of where you stand in terms of risk. More important, you'll get a list of risk factors that explain what's driving that score. They tie back to your credit report and you can use that information to help you with the budgeting and planning to pay down your debts or address the issues in your report. The factors are actually more empowering than the number. And the number gives you a sense of where you stand. The factors tell you what you need to do and, and they really help you take action. And that's what's important. Um, I would also add business credit reports. There's also a business credit score and it's different than consumer scores. Uh, experience business credit score actually goes from one to 100. So the higher your score, the better for your business. So it doesn't look like a, a personal report. The other thing that's different is that the business credit score is on the business credit report It's part of it. Uh, and your personal scores are not, they're not part of a credit report. They're done by different companies like FICO or Vantage Score. They own those models. And so Experian pulls your report together and provides it to the lender the scores are calculated It's a separate process. So it's a little different. And there's lots of scores and lots of scales with personal credit reports. So what are some steps if someone pulled their personal credit from the annualcreditreport.com and they see some discrepancies, mm -hmm. what are some steps that they can take? Um, with Experian, out? visit www.experian.com slash dispute and follow the instructions. If you have your personal report, you can put in that uh, report number, the report will pop up and you go through one line at a time. And if you need to dispute, you just click the dispute button and follow the instructions. Really simple to do. Um, if you don't already have your personal report or you don't have a current one or a new one, we'll ask you for some information, we'll give you one. And so you have the current report with current information. Same thing, walk through, hit dispute, if you have documentation, you can upload that documentation to us and we'll send the dispute, all of the documents to the source, usually a lender, and they then have to review the records and make sure everything is correct as reported or needs to be updated or should be deleted. They'll tell us what they need to do to that account. We'll make those changes. Uh, they're allowed 30 days to complete the process. Usually it's more like 10 to 14 business days, often just two or three business days. So happens pretty quickly today. Good, that's excellent. 
actually that brought to mind, I've heard some horror stories of people using debt consolidation companies to help fix their credit and help them. What are some cautionary tales and what should someone look for if they're trying to look for an agency like that? Or if they should? Um, the thing to look for, first and foremost, is if an organization says, if you pay me $700 an account or $1,200 an account, I'll get that negative information removed, even though it's accurate. Um, several problems with that. One, it's illegal. So they cannot take any money up front uh, or they violate what's called the Credit Repair Organizations Act. So the CROA, the Credit Repair Organizations Act says that a credit re repair firm cannot take any money up front. They cannot take a dime until they fulfill all of the terms they provide for in a written contract. You have three days to withdraw. So be sure you understand your rights uh, when you work with someone who's promising to quote, fix your credit. You know, that's kind of the first clue. If they want money up front, big problem. Um, however, there are some really, really good nonprofits and, and a few for profit for profit counseling services. They're not going to say, pay me and I'll get accurate stuff on your report. It's illegal. Again, so they can't do that. Um, what they will tell you is we'll work with you to help understand how you can budget more effectively, where your funds might be better sent, help you learn about credit reporting and credit works. And they may work with your lenders to help negotiate reduced payment plans uh, or what we call debt management plans. So, you know, I tell people look for an organization that says it's, this won't be easy. You know, if they say it's going to be easy, a clue it's probably a problem it's going to take work uh, and time uh, so first clue uh, when you talk about consolidation there are two different things that happen and one's legitimate one is a little mm, questionable um, the first is if you talk to a, a lender and they say that we'll write one loan that will pay off those debts you're trying to re recover from in full and cause them to be reported as paid in full. And then you have one single larger loan, usually paid over a longer period of time, probably at a lower interest rate, will help reduce your payments and you can help, it'll help you manage that debt. Um, that works, you usually see it with student loans. Uh, I went through that same process with my student loans. Um, but it takes longer to repay. The key is that all of those other debts show paid in full. Uh, they don't show settled um, or delinquent or charged off or collections. You know, they're paid in full. That's, that's one kind of consolidation. You consolidate all of your old debts into one. Uh, the other kind of consolidation can, is, is typically tied to debt settlement. So, what the organization would say is we'll negotiate reduced payments with your lenders, usually lower interest rates or lower principal. And you make one payment to us and we'll distribute that amount. So you consolidate it into one payment to one organization who then is supposed to pay um, everybody else. And a couple of things to watch out for one Anytime you settle a debt for less than you owe, it's going to hurt your credit scores. It's going to hurt your credit report. That seems negative. So your those accounts will be reported as settled, not paid or paid in full. So that's going to be negative. The other thing to watch out for is to make sure that that organization is making those payments on time. I mean, I've seen instances where you give a payment to a debt settlement firm and they say they're consolidating your payments, but they'll sit on that payment and not get the payments on time. And now the accounts are reported late on top of being settled. So you'll make sure that you understand what the agreement is and that your payments are being made on time and the effect it's going to have. A lot there, I know. <laughs> no, no, this is great information. And for those who don't understand the terms of what settled and chargeback mean, can you yeah. explain that a little Settled more? Settled means that you've negotiated to repay a debt for less than you originally owed. 
So, you know, if you owe a thousand dollars and you are unable to manage it, you can work with a lender and they say, well, consider it paid. If you pay us $800, you've settled the debt for less than you owe in your credit report. It's going to show settled uh, or paid settled, but the term settled is the key word. That means you didn't pay it off as agreed. Um, sometimes it's negotiating a lower interest rate, which means you still aren't meeting the original terms of the loan. So you don't repay the full amount. Uh, so that's also going to be reported as settled and, and that's and settled is negative. It's always negative. Um, a charge off means that you have an account, you're unable to repay it. So the lender charges it off as a bad debt says we, we aren't going to get paid. And at that point, they typically uh, sell the account or the debt to a collection agency. So it's charged off goes to collections and then you should work with the collection agency because they become the legal owner of the debt. Good to know. Excellent. Well, I'll leave it for any last minute questions for us here. If you have it, do forward slash Q and we'll answer your questions again. Thank you so much, Rob, for joining us today. I very oh, much appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks. Thank and thanks, Brittany, for and you as well. putting up with me, too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you taught us a lot of good things. And I think you made a lot of jobs yeah. drop earlier. <laughs> so it's good. This is what I wanted. I wanted us to learn a lot more about business and personal credit and things and how to clean it up, improve it and, you know, help us to financial security and freedom in the future. So it doesn't look like we have any more questions. I'm going to leave this moment for Brittany to reintroduce herself for anyone who just joined and offer any services she has. And then we'll leave it to you, Rod, to close up and reintroduce yourself and talk about when we can start watching you guys on Periscope and Blab. So Brittany. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I didn't know you guys were on Periscope. So now I'm all excited. Like I can share you guys broadcast to my followers. But if this is, if you're just joining, my name is Brittany Butler. I run a website called MissBeatBab.com. And on that website, I teach women to use money to brand their life's purpose. So I help them to manage their debt and then also um, use their money to build businesses or travel or do the things that they've always desired with their money. So what I have going on right now is for the month of April, we'll be doing a 21 day challenge. It'll be like a financial rehab and I'll just walk you through the steps of building a budget and allowing you to actually pay um, your debt off. And then also how to cut your spending in ways that maybe you didn't think of, um, you know, lowering your bills, calling and negotiating some of the stuff that Rod was talking about, even just calling your um, creditors and asking them not necessarily like they're gonna do a charge off or anything like that, but just what can you work out? So if you're interested in joining, you can go to bit.ly forward slash payback challenge and we'll start April 1st. Can you type that link into the chat box for everyone? So if anybody wants to follow, they can sign yeah. up. And Rod, please let us know how we can continue following Experian and getting more sure. great tips. Um, you know, I'm director of public education for Experian, so I get to do great things like this and talk to great people like, like uh, you and Brittany and share information. So I think we have the same passion uh, to, learn more with us and engage. You can see us on Periscope every Tuesday and Thursday with me. Uh, and I'm just answering your credit questions and question about credit scores uh, at our hashtag credit scope. Uh, but we're on experience on every day at 1 30 central two thirty Eastern and uh, Mike Delgado and Christina Roman. If you don't see me, you're probably going to be on and they're extremely creative and brilliant. Uh, especially social media and, and, and about credit reporting. So join us there on Periscope and on our credit chat, hashtag credit chat every, credit chat every Wednesday at uh, two, uh, 2 Central, 3 Eastern. And we have a Twitter chat and a blab and have great guests on who share wonderful information about personal finance, not just credit reports and credit scores, but investing and retirement savings and all sorts of things. So hope to see you there and you can visit experience.com slash credit education for more information as well. You know, we have an online credit advice call called Ask Experian and a lot of other resources. So uh, thank you all for having me and have a hope you have a great Saturday and the rest of the weekend. 
Thank you so much again for Brittany for joining us and Mr. Rod. I'm going to call you Mr. Rod. I grew up in Texas. My parents always said I have to. Oh, you're in Texas. Business. So, <laughs> and for those of you who just joined us or joined us late, go ahead and catch a replay here so you can get any of your questions answered that may have been. I'm going to be here every third Saturday. The next one will be April 16th, 10 a.m. Mountain Standard Time, and we're going to talk about records and information management. And I'm going to have a couple of speakers who are professional organizers to help you organize your household, your finances, and everything else. So have a great Saturday. Thank you for joining us. I appreciate it. All right. Have Thank a good you. day. Bye. <laughs>